All right there. Now uh, today what I'm going to be doing is installing a SSFP faceplate, a service specific faceplate from BT OpenReach. This is the Mark III version. Now this is usually installed when you get FTTC fiber installations, fiber to the cabinet. But I'm going to install it on ADSL2+. Plus. Now the filter is quite similar. It's supposed to be better quality though and it's built into the socket as well. So um, you know it's all bonus. Uh, it's up to the requirements for having these plugged into all your sockets. You just plug your modem directly into the top of the socket. It goes over the top of here. You remove this piece, slot it on, put that piece back over and you're done. So I'm going to show you installing that. I'm going to see if I can increase my uh, speeds. At the moment I don't have fiber to the cabinet available. There's been a lot of waiting. I've been waiting since 2012. But if you look at they've now put on the page as of the other day it's currently not available due to cabinet enabled between April 2016 and March 2017 date to be confirmed blah 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 I should be getting uh, up to 11 down 10 to 11.5 I'll actually get just under 13 meg download if I go to here I'll show you see so 0.93 down not 0.98 up I'll just run another test really quickly and show you here alright begin test the speeds are very consistent though throughout all the times. So you got 12.9 odd. Now this is using this here dumb modem as I call it. It's a Netgear DM111PV2. Now if you look here it is just an ADSL2 plus modem. It's not a router or anything. It can do DHCP but I've disabled that. Now I have this here purely to pass on. It converts DSL into Ethernet and passes the IP address onto the device that's connected to it which at this moment in time is as some of you may have seen is my PFSense box which is running here now that's a computer built into a case and I have two BT lines both of them have got one of these on them set up uh, and it's in PPPOE pass-through I think it is I'll correct it on the screen if I said that wrong uh, it's in some sort of pass-through mode which just passes the public IP address straight through, no NAT, no firewall, no nothing on that. The UPS sense box is left to do all of that, as if I had an ADSL cabinet. Here's the speed test results, 12.93 down again, 1.01 up world speed. What I'm going to do is pop this faceplate on here and uh, I'll show you through the process of doing it. I'm also shooting a second video on adding the extension telephone socket. So I'm recording two things at once, but they're going to be two separate videos. Check my channel out for that if you're interested in that as well. Alright, now to install the faceplate, this thing right here. It's quite easy, you don't even have to rewire anything. There's a slit through the bottom that your extension wiring can just go into. And uh, yeah, it's, anyone could really do this. Now what you need to do first is remove this faceplate, which is two screws here. Alright, once you've unscrewed it, pull it off. Now this has got extension wiring in this socket that I've done, that was just recently done as well, the extension socket is actually here, you can view my other video on that if you want to install extension wiring. Let me fiddle with this to get it out. Alright, that's what you need out. Now you need to unbag this, which I'm going to do now. Alright, the faceplate is out of the packaging as you can see. It's got the screws included, which are these here, and there's also a cable tie, should you need it. What you need to do is get this here and put your extension telephone wiring through the bottom and push it over the existing open reach socket and it sticks on top of the NT5 like that. And now you need to put your faceplate back on again, which is this piece here. your wiring back inside again if you have extension wiring let me do that alright with the wiring stuffed in the back you should now be able to put this over the top like that now this will all be loose until we screw it in of course which is what the extra long screws that are included are for so break them out ok I've got the screws out if this would focus it would be great there we go these are included which I'm not quite sure what those are for but I think they're for a different type of back box or whatever installation scenario these two here are the stock ones that come that hold the bottom faceplate on. These are what come with the socket. Those screw all the way through this faceplate and into the back box. So you need to use these long screws here, one on each side. Pull them in the front. 
and then you screw them in, which I'm going to do now. Let me tell you now, it's a much easier job to put these screws in without holding a camera. That is now fixed in, as you can see it isn't going anywhere. Tugging at it, pushing at it, it isn't going to go. The wiring's coming back out the bottom here, which is the extension wiring. That's just through that slit at the bottom, which, uh, if your wiring comes out the bottom of the socket, you put it through there. Mine's coming out of the actual back box hole, so it doesn't even affect that. You will now, instead of using these, do not plug these into anything. Don't plug them into this socket, don't plug them into any of your extension sockets. You don't need them, because this is built inside of here, in the top section. That socket there is what's there. So you now take your modem or router's card and you plug it straight in, which you will have there. I'm not sure which way this goes, I think it goes this way. All right, push that in, that is installed now. Then you can install your telephone into here. Probably the wrong way around, yep. Into here, like that. Now you no longer need these. Now I'm going to see if it's increased my speeds as well, lots of interest. On a normal DSL connection, it's ADSL2+, plus. it's not fibre, or FTTC, VDSL, whatever, which is what these faceplates are designed for. But, does it do better filtering than a normal filter that's supplied? I guess we'll have to find out now. Okay, apologies for this, but I have lost the footage of the speed test with the service specific faceplate on. Um, well, it's now gone again, as you can probably notice, it's been removed. Well, the reason behind that is that it dropped the speeds down from the 13 meg download I was getting down to around about 10.5 meg. Uh, and the upload speed had actually gone up by 0 0.10, I think. It was around about 0. Point, it was on about 1.10 upload with the SSFP, but the download came down to about 10 meg instead of 13. So for the little gain in upload, I preferred the download speed and I've switched back to the standard filter, which you can see there, uh, back to the normal faceplate. So uh, that's the situation and it did not improve my speeds with my configuration. Yours may differ, as I've said, it could be worth a try but I'm keeping the faceplate to a side until I get Infinity installed uh, and when BDSL, fibre to the cabinet, etc, hybrid fibre becomes available for me and then I will be using it but until then we're back to the standard faceplate and the same micro filter anyway thanks for watching if you enjoyed the video or found it interesting please leave a like and check out my channel for other broadband related things, modems, routers, networking all that kind of stuff, I do all sorts of crazy things